It is Friday, October 7th, 2016, and welcome to this episode of Code Evolution. Today I wanted to do a review of all the major features that were released in TypeScript 2. So we're going to review an article written by Daniel Rosenwasser that was published back in August 30th that goes over some of these features. Now if you haven't seen my video about non-nullable types, um, click in the link above to uh, watch that video. That's probably one of the most major features that has been released. Um, but I did a whole video on that one. So let's continue on here, and we're going to review some of the more interesting features that are coming out. So this one here, we're talking about tagged unions. Now to cut to the chase, and not, you know, again, what is it, uh, uh, too long to read, you know, kind of thing. Uh, let's, let's not get into it too much. So what I did was, is I went ahead and um, set up some stuff here to kind of demonstrate what uh, tagged unions can do. So what they're suggesting here is that it's we're getting more into the notion of what literals are, right? Like there's a string literal. So in the case of circle, circle has a kind that's always, or kind property that will always be circle, right? And for uh, square, the kind property it's assuming will always be uh, square. So these kind of make sense. And then there's some pivoting properties of radius and side length that are different. So if you have a type that is derived from both of these by using a union, you get one like a circle or a square ends up being a shape. And obviously we could add more uh, interfaces here that fit into that category, but they all provide a property called kind, and that will allow for you to do this kind of switching. So you say, oh, I wanna do, if it's a circle, then do this. If it's a square, then do that. And you kind of see the general gist of what's going on here. Now, if we go back to the article here, we can kind of see they get a little bit more in depth on this. So the important part here is each type has a common field, but has been tagged with a unique value. And as stated here in TypeScript 1.8, writing a function to get the area of a shape required a type assertion for each type in shape. So this is the TypeScript 1.8 version that would require you to effectively define a property as a specific type so that you could continue to use it. In this case, because you declared shape as a circle, then you get this C radius is allowed. But this is where it gets interesting. Now when we get into 2.0, it's not necessary to do this at all because the compiler understands that in the case of uh, this particular literal, and it applies it properly that it says, oh, I don't, I'm not going to throw any assertions at you because I already know that if this is a circle uh, literal, it maps to this value and that radius is, uh, is allowed. So if let's go into the code and just kind of show this off. So basically what is going on is we can say, um, get rid of that. And you can see that there's no compiler errors and everything's happy because the compiler understands the control flow of these literals mapping to these individual types. So next up, there are more literal types. This is a really big deal because we started off with the ability to use strings, but now you can actually use numbers as literal types and the type checking will do the work for you. So as you can see in Daniel's example here, he's talking about, you know, having the individual digits be a number, and then you can say, oh, I know that it has to be a digit, and if you try to put uh, number 16 onto this array, well, it won't allow because it doesn't fit within the potential um, literal uh, values. This is su super cool stuff that we don't really see in any other language, and it's very exciting. So Daniel gets into another idea around literals, which is actually going beyond strings and numbers and even having Booleans be literals as well. So if you take this result type, which is a union of success and failure, now if you're pivoting on that result, the success value actually provides you with some important things. So the difference between success and failure is that one has a value, the other one has a reason. This is really cool because now if the success is true, it can then make the assumption that it has to be a success value and return the value of that success in here in the log, or and it can pivot and say, well, we're gonna actually return the reason making that assumption. So these are great things, great features, just a simple Boolean literals um, is very, very cool. 
And then we kind of keep going here, and this is a really interesting feature, is that enums now have their own literal uh, abilities. So you can say, oh, action type, you know, append is a literal for append action. And you can see, again, there's these uh, common values, and then there's these values that are different. And so for append action, uh, if you see the subsequent code, it's able to treat that as a literal and then derive what the type is based upon what that liberal setting is. So again, very, very cool stuff. And lastly, this article reviews how includes and excludes have improved glob support. So in the case of if you're trying to include certain files and exclude files, this now is something that is part of TS config JSON works very well. Another long-awaited feature for a lot of people is being able to specify read-only on a property, much like you can do in other languages. So for example, you literally just can put read-only in front of a standard property instead of having to specify a getter, a setter. The thing to remember is that this doesn't prevent you at runtime from setting the property. It does prevent you from doing it at compile time. And the read-only behavior is similar to other languages where you can set the value in the constructor just like you see here but you can't do it anywhere else. So I didn't cover every feature because there's a lot. And here we are uh, looking at the roadmap showing obviously non-nullable types I talked about before, which also includes the control flow based type analysis. We talked about union types. There's a lot of things here. And so I wanna just kind of go over some of the really cool ones that um, you know, Daniel reviewed as well as, you know, a few other ones that come up in other articles. So probably the one that everybody's really waiting for is this. Async await is already available for people that are compiling um, to ES6, but for a lot of us who are still kind of living in ES5 world, we really, really would like to see this feature. And so in 2.1, coming very soon, you'll be able to do async await syntax in your code. Very excited about that. I will definitely do a video about it once this is released. So I hope that helped everybody get a bit more up to date with the features that are coming out of TypeScript 2. As always, if this video helps you, please give it a like. And if you'd like to see more content like this, click subscribe.